Ever wondered how Quixel manages to create jaw-dropping 3D scans that look unreal, even up close? I mean, sure, you can start with an app on your phone or 3D scanners, but you'll quickly hit a wall when you want realistic, high-fidelity 3D scans of any size. I've spent months diving deep into this, hitting roadblocks and making mistakes so that you don't have to. Get ready, because today I'm revealing a secret on how you can create your very own Quixel quality 3D scans. Now, before I start, I have to give a big shout-out to William. William Fauscher, I've learned a ton from his videos. Without his input, I would not stand where I am today. So the idea is the same as using your phone. You want to take a whole bunch of photos from your object to scan it. This technique is called photogrammetry. You could use your phone for that, but if you have an SLR, I would suggest using it. Megapixels play an important role in photogrammetry. Plus, you want to shoot raw as we're going to need to tweak the lighting in post. Now, one of the first problems you'll run into is lighting. As you take photos from different angles, the exposure is going to be different and sometimes times the colors as well due to the reflections. I tried a lot of different things and 20 scans down the road I was about to give up. Until I learned from William to use a flash and I actually got this ring light from Godox which he uses as well and it has been working absolutely amazing. Now there's one problem and that is that ring lights produce direct reflections. If the light comes from an angle you can use a single polarization filter to cut that reflection out. But with a ring light it comes straight from behind the lens. So to solve that problem I got a polarization filter for the flash itself. Now, as you point the light into a mirror, just turn the filter on your camera until the light is at its minimum. Don't ask me how this witchcraft works, it just does. So, this is my entire setup, which allows me to create Quixel quality 3D scans. And I'm gonna leave links to all of this in the description. These are the affiliate links from William, so if you make a purchase through one of those links, you'll support him as well. Now, that flash is doing much more than just making sure that the lighting is even and that we avoid reflections. It also separates the background from the object. Here's a picture with a flash and one without. The one with the flash is gonna create a much cleaner mesh and texture. A flash can also outperform the sun, so you could use this outdoor and bright sunlight too. All right, we are ready to start shooting. So you wanna go around the object to shoot it from as many angles as possible. I usually go around in circles, each time lowering the perspective. For smaller objects like these, I typically end up between 200 to 400 photos. Now you might be tempted to go close to really capture the detail and you could do that but be aware the closer you get the shallower the depth of field and photos like these are actually not that helpful for 3d scanning you want to try to get your entire object in focus closing the aperture helps a lot i set mine to an f-stop of at least 16. now shooting wide angle also creates a wider depth of field but it makes your object smaller and creates distortion so you want to find a good middle ground from all of my tests shooting at around 30 millimeters on a full frame camera came out best. It kept the object at all times in focus while still getting enough detail without having to go too close. Now you can also see that I basically hang my object from the ceiling. This allows me to capture a full 360 degree. You could scan the top first and flip it over and then scan the bottom, but that's gonna make things just more complicated later on. Plus, since I'm working with industrial light fixtures, that connection point on the model doesn't cause a big problem for my scans. You see, every situation is kind of different. Anyways, as you're walking around your object, always keep in mind that each photo needs to be connected to the other one. I had a lot of trouble capturing this round ceiling lamp as the software would never understand what the bottom was. That's because you need to have a series of photos that shows both the top and the bottom part. That way the software will know where it needs to link the two together. Another reason why you don't want to get too close, stay at a distance to capture the object in its entirety. And after many attempts, I finally got my scan perfect. Keeping everything in mind that I learned, I was able to get my next captures perfect from the first attempt. And I'm actually working on an asset pack for Unreal Engine of these industrial lights that you can adjust and control. It might be finished in a month or so. So we've got our photos, how do we turn it now into a 3D model? Well, first of all, we're gonna batch edit them. I just drag all my photos in Photoshop, which opens them up in Camera Raw, but you can use Lightroom or anything else that you prefer. The idea is that you select all of your photos and make them flatter. So increase the shadows and decrease the highlights. You might want to bring back some saturation. And I also like to add some texture in there. Flat is good as the lighting of the model will be created in your 3D program, like Unreal Engine. However, they still serve as a texture, so you want the right punch and colors as well. Then I just export them all out as JPEG and the highest possible quality. We're now ready to turn all of these images into a 3D model. But first, I want to show you guys an amazing tool that I've been using for years. It's a plugin for Adobe Premiere and After Effects 
Artifacts, which gives me direct access to a library of over a million royalty-free stock assets from Storyblocks, the sponsor of this video. I can look for a logo reveal, immediately import that in Premiere, and just swap it out with my logo. There are transitions, overlay effects, lower third templates, text animations, green screen clips, animated backgrounds, stock clips, and every imaginable genre or theme, and all of that in 4K or HD resolution. With an active subscription, you can download unlimited assets. So, you can try out a bunch without having to worry about extra fees. Other stock websites often charge a hefty fee per download, but that's not the case with Storyblocks. And it's that quality and freedom to download as much as I want why I love it so much. The community-driven library keeps expanding, so you can always find something new that is up to date with the latest creative trends. It saves me time when creating videos. I don't need to leave Premiere, keeping focused, and my videos are of a much higher quality. So I highly recommend Storyblocks to any creative. Take back your creative control now with Storyblocks royalty-free stock assets and tools today by going to storyblocks.com forward slash cinecom or simply click the first link in the description down below. And now back to scanning. We're gonna use a program called Reality Capture. This is what the guys over at Quixel use as well and allows for the highest possible quality in photogrammetry. There's no compression or any of that whatsoever. This means that we're gonna have to do our own compression, otherwise we'll end up with a ridiculous big file. But that's gonna be a simple process. Now, a little disclaimer, the software is free. You can use all the tools without any restriction. Only when you're about to export your 3D model, they'll ask a small fee of a couple of bucks. Let's start by changing the view to one plus one layout. You'll have a panel in which you collect all of your data and on the right is the 3D view. Now simply take all of your photos and drag them into reality capture. In the panel on the left, you'll find all of your images back. Then let's go to the menu on top, choose alignment and click on align images. This process could take some time, so let's grab a coffee. Tirty five coffees later. Okay, fast forward, and if everything went well, you should see a point cloud of your object. In the left panel, there's now a components list. And chances are that you see multiple components in here, which means that Reality Capture thinks that there are multiple objects, which is not good. Sometimes these just include a couple of photos, which is no big deal. You can just delete those. But if your biggest component is still far off from all the pictures you took, I suggest to go back and make some extra photos or just reshoot entirely. I had a fluorescent light, but an an outer white reflective surface and an inner dark non-reflective surface. It was super hard to get the exposure right, which caused it to give problems. Reality Capture was not able to link the top and the bottom together. Now there are manual tricks to link them together, but I ended up just spray painting the fixture, giving it a more even texture across the entire object. Now of course, for the industrial look that I'm going for, this works. So in my second attempt, I took 501 photos and Reality Capture found all of them, so I can Consider this a perfect scan. We're now ready to create the mesh from this point cloud. But first, we're gonna go to Mesh Model and click on Set Construction Area. Only within this box, Reality Capture will create the mesh. And you wanna make sure that everything sits within. You can always cut out unwanted parts afterwards, so this can be done roughly. Using your numpads, you can cycle through different views to better help align that box. We can now go to the Create Model section, and basically, you can create different detail levels of your mesh here. You you can do a quick preview if you want. This is a low quality mesh, but it gives you an idea of how your mesh is gonna look like. But I feel confident, so let's click on high detail. We can always compress it afterwards, so I would start from the highest possible quality and then downscale from there. Now, this process does take a whole lot longer. I've had models take up to a day to construct, but it is worth it. And look at that, we've got ourselves a perfect mesh, but chances are that you'll come across things that shouldn't be there. So we're gonna have to remove those. Under your Scene 3D tab, click on Tools. From there, enable Lasso, which allows you to select the parts that you don't want. When done, click on Filter Selection to remove that part. So you want to check your mesh and see if you need to get rid of some spill. Now, the great thing of Reality Capture is that every change you make is stored in a new model. In the left column under Components, you can see two models now. Clicking on the first one shows me the mesh again with the spill. So that's the reason I wanted you to create a mesh with the highest possible quality, because we're going to have 
to downscale now and if you do something wrong along the way there, no worries, you always have your original mesh. The current one has over 270 million triangles, which is insanely huge. This will create, I, I don't know, like easily a 10 gigabit file. So under tools again, we're going to locate the simplify tool, which opens up its settings on the left column. Here we can set a new triangle count and I would set it between one and two million, which is more than enough. It creates a high quality mesh while staying under 400 megabytes. You could try a lower triangle count and compare it to the original mesh. Just find something that you feel good with. So yeah, then there is just one last thing to do and that is texturing. So we're gonna go back to the mesh model options and find the texture tool. Let it do its thing and our 3D model now is done. All there's left to do is export it out so that we can use it in something like Unreal Engine. And to do that, click on dense mesh model, which will save it as an OBJ file. And here's where we'll ask for some money to export it. So you can make as many mistakes as you want and only pay when you're happy. And it just costs a few bucks, so you're not bound to some expensive subscription or whatnot. And if you do plan to use it a lot, there is a one-time payment option as well. But yeah, here we have it. Sitting inside Unreal Engine, I have zero modeling skills, so I'm super happy that this tool exists. You cannot get any higher quality than this. It's as if I'm looking at a real photo of my light fixture. It's crazy. Now, if you're just getting started with scanning and reality capture is a bit overwhelming, then definitely check out the video here on my left in which I show you how to use a simple app called Curie Engine, which has a lot of free options as well. Thank you for watching, thank you StoryBlocks for your support, and as always, stay creative.